welcome to the start of the part about the partial part of the partial screen shake shaded tutorial by PeerPlay. In this part, we will draw the shake shape by which we will multiply the shake offset. If you find the contents of this tutorial helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to create these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Wayne Glows. So in this part, we want to create a shape by which we can multiply the offset of the screen. So on the bottom you see the game view window and here we have our shader graph with how far we've got in the last part. We've added the noise shake XY, we've got the random shake here. And now let's start by drawing the shape on the screen. So to draw a shape on the screen we need to get the screen position. So I'm going to type here screen position. And this outputs a vector 4 but we only need the first two ones which are the X and the Y positions of the screen position. So we're going to drag this out and type piling and offset. And we're going to connect this to the UV. Now I'm going to give you an example of how to create a circle. And then I'm going to give you an example of how to create a box or a square. So to create a circle, we just need to have a distance and some kind of a radius of the circle. So we need to get a distance from some point. So we're going to drag out from this and we'll type distance, put it into A. And now you see that it puts a circle here at the left bottom corner. But we want to draw the circle in the middle of the screen. So we're going to use the offset of the tiling and offset and change this 0 to minus 0 0.5. So it goes to the center here and then the minus 0 0.5 of the Y. Now we've got a dot in the center. Now if I zoom in a little bit, I can show you a bit better. So what we do with the distance is, what is the distance from the center point 0, 0? And because we offset it here by 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, the center point becomes a 0 point. So 0 0.0, the distance to the 0 0.0 is 0, so this is completely black. And the distance straight horizontal to the left, here it would be 0 0.5. So you see that it's a gray color. Now we want to create a circle out of this dot. And we can do this by using the gradient that we have here. And the way we can create a radius to the circle is by subtracting a value from this equation. So if I would subtract 0.1 from it, then that would mean that everything here that is 0.1 distance would fall below 0 and therefore it becomes black. So let's do that. So we're going to output a subtract a from b now it subtracts one everything will be black if i put this to zero we'll get the same result and as i set this to a larger number the circle will grow let's set this to 25 now we can view this outcome in the game screen just see how it works so for that i'm just going to connect this one to the fragment directly i'm going to save it and now we can see it on the camera screen. Now you'll notice that this is not a perfect circle because we are using here a resolution of 16 by 9. Now if I go to the tiling and offset, we're using here a tiling of 1 by 1. But the camera is using 16 by 9. So if we want to create a perfect circle onto this camera, we would need to set this one to match the dimensions of the camera. So if we set this to 1.6 and... 0 0.9 and save that now we have a circle but then we also have to change the offsets here to the half of this one so i'll set this to 8 and this one to 45 and now we've got a perfect circle in the center of the screen now let's say we only want to have this circle but we don't want to have the gradient on the outside of it we can do that by using the step function so i'm gonna type step in and a step function we can say everything above a certain number should turn true and everything below a certain number should turn false so if i set this to zero that means that everything that was zero or below zero here becomes zero and everything above zero becomes one so if i increase this a little bit because it's a gradient so i can make it 0 0.1 it should grow a little bit Yes. Now let me set this to zero again. Now this looks like the flag of Japan. Let's say we want to create the flag of Japan shader. 
To do that, we want to color the circle red. So what we can do is we can invert this outcome and then we can colorize the dot that we get. So let me do a one minus, which means that everything will be inverted. And then let's say we're going to get a color. Uh, and I'm going to try to get the color from the flag of Japan, which is something like this. And then we're going to multiply these two together. I'll say multiply. And now what we can do is we can add these two together. So let's create an add. Put this one in here. Put this one into the fragment. Save it. And there we have the flag of Japan. But for this shader, I'm going to create a square and not a circle. But if you want to use the circle, this is how you make a circle. And this is like a little introduction into that. So let me remove everything here. We can keep using the tiling and offset. Put this a little bit higher and back. And I'm going to set this back to 1, 1 and minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5. Now to create a square is almost the same as creating a circle, only we need to use the absolute values. And the absolute operator means that everything above zero, which is this entire part of the upper part, will become the lower part. And everything on this side will become this side. So let's use the apps function, absolute. And now to create the radius of the square, we can subtract from this a certain amount. So we'll say subtract. Instead of subtracting one number, we need to subtract it in the X and the Y. So let me set it to zero first. Now, if I set the zero part a little bit bigger, we can see a bit of a line. Now, if I increase this, you can see a square. Let me set this to 25 and 0 0.25 here. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that no values are below zero. So to do that, we can use a max function. And a max function will take the highest outputs of two outputs that are compared with each other. So these are zero and zero, which is what I want. So if any of the numbers from the output here are below zero, it will take the maximum output, which is zero, because that is the highest number. And any numbers above zero won't be influenced by this. Now we can't yet use this output because we want to use a float. And we're going to use the similar thing that we did for the circle by using the distance function. Here, we're not going to use the distance function, but we're using length. Now we get a similar output as we had with the circle. Now let's see how that looks in game view. So if I connect this one to the fragment, hit save. We can see the square here. Everything inside of this box, so everything that is black, won't be affected by the screen shake, but everything that has a tint above zero will be affected by the screen shake. Now, the only thing we want to control is the gradient fall off of this border. And we can do this by using a smooth step. With a normal step, we only have one value as a threshold. With the smooth step, we can set two different values. So we're going to drag out from here and we'll type smooth step and we'll use the in. Now the first value of the smooth step will be zero. So it will start at zero, which is completely black. Now, if I set this value to zero as well, it will become just sharp, but this is not what we want for the shader because this will make it very obvious where the screen shake starts and where it suddenly stops. So we want to have kind of a smooth transition from no shake to more shake. Now to make this work in the shader, we need to multiply this output by the offset percentage. So let's go to the offset percentage and let's say multiply. And we're going to multiply this by the outcome of this. And then reconnect this one into B. Let's put this into a little bit better position. Now, as you can see, it's working. It's clearly not shaking the middle rectangular part, but it's only shaking the outer parts of the screen. Let's uh, change a few of these values. So if I um, set the smooth step to um, 0 0.1, we can see that the effect doesn't look very good with that. So if I set this actually to 2, it should be a bit more smooth. 
but also very much on the sides. So for now, I'll just keep it at one, which should be fine. Now we can, of course, also adjust the size of the rectangle. So if I set this to 0 0.1, save. And it looks a little bit more like it's around the character. Now let's add some parameters so we can control the shape offset and the shape radius. So let's create a float. And we'll call this the shape offset x. And we'll create another one, shape offset y. Let's drag these into the scene. Let's create a vector 2. Connect these two and put that into the offset. Let's set the default values to minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5. Now let's also create parameters for the radius. Float, shape, radius, x. And another one, shape, radius, y. Let's drag these into the scene. Create a vector 2. Connect these and connect this to the subtract. And let's also create a parameter for the edge. So we're going to add another float and we'll call this the shape edge. Let's drag this and put it into the edge too. Let me set this radius default to 0 0.25. This one to 0 0.25. Let's add the default of this one to one. And now let's close all these ones and set it up nicely. Now let's select everything, hit Ctrl G to group, and we'll call this Shake Shape. Place this nicely above here. And now let's save the shader. Now let's add the new parameters to the screen shake settings. I'm going to create a new header. Copy paste this, and I'll call this the Shake Shape. Now let's copy a couple of these, and we'll call this the... Offset X, we'll call this the Offset Y, we'll call this the Radius X, and the Radius Y. Now the offset doesn't have to be between 0 and 100, it should be something like minus 2 and maximum is 2. And this can be minus 2 and maximum 2. And the Radius should be between 0 and 1. Let's create one more line and we'll add the edge here. Now let's set this one to a minimum of 0 0.01 and let's set the maximum to 2. Now let's save the script and go to the screen shake render feature. Now let's copy a few of these lines and set this to the shape offset x. And this will be the shape offset Y. We want to use here the offset X. And here we want to use the offset Y. Now for the radius. Shape radius. Shape radius. Radius X. And radius Y. And now we need one more. We'll call this shape edge. And we'll use here edge. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. If you made the same mistake as I did, then change this to minus two and then save it again and go back to Unity. Now here we are in play mode to test out the results. On the right, you see our volume with the screen shake settings and also the screen shake controller. Let me turn that one off and we're going to set the screen shake settings or the strength very high. Use a random random shake. And now let's set these parameters to see if it works. So let's set the offset to minus 0.5 to the center. Minus 0 0.5. Uh, let's increase the radius a little bit. Radius of this as well. And the edge. And as you can see, that works. So now we can play around with these settings and see uh, what looks best. So if we set the edge to 1, to have a bit of a smooth fall off. We can set the uh, radius a little bit smaller. We can change the offset to a different position. Let's actually turn this on. 
and see how it looks when we do a screen shake by tapping one. Offset percentage is a little bit higher. So now we have the partial screen shake working. I don't want to make these parts take too long, so I'm going to cut it off here. In the next part, we'll create the shape debug window and we'll create the character tracking system. So we'll set the shape to match the, where the character is. Thank you for following so far and thanks to all my patrons. To stay updated with new content, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Happy coding.